about lifestyle change, about adding little things every day, learning something every day and implementing that. Not about taking one big chunk of something and trying to digest all of it and learn it all. So here's one more little thing that we're learning when it comes down to a fatty liver. Now in this particular case, focusing on an alcohol-induced fatty liver could still have some practical application for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but I'm a man of science, and when we look at the evidence, we look at the research, and we look at the evidence-based kind of stuff that's coming out, we have to address it to where it is. And this particular case is talking about alcohol-induced fatty liver. So what happens is when we digest things, when we metabolize things, we have what are called reactive oxygen species. This is a very blanket way of putting this, but basically we have exhaust that comes as a result of metabolism. And this exhaust, a reactive oxygen species, can trigger what is called lipid peroxidation in the hepatocyte. Hepatocyte is a liver cell, and lipid peroxidation is the oxidation of fats. So if we have fats or we have uh, hepatocytes in the cell membranes that are made out of fats and lipids, and those become uh, oxidized, that is called lipid peroxidation. Not exactly a good thing, and it's something that happens quite a bit. Now, when you look at alcohol, when you consume alcohol, this really elevates that reactive oxygen species level. So the impact on the hepatic cells could be significantly more, leading to what could potentially be alcohol-induced steatosis, okay? So how does alcohol potentially play a role here? Well, we're gonna dive into that, but in short, alcohol affects the fatty acid beta oxidation. So it affects the ability for a liver cell to actually burn and oxidize fat. If it's not good at oxidizing fat, then it can potentially accumulate. So let's look at the research. Today's video is brought to us by Thrive Market. In terms of grocery shopping, you can save 25% off your entire grocery order through Thrive Market and get a free gift when you use that link down below. So basically, Thrive Market's an online grocery store. They've been on my channel for like four or five years now. They are epic. Okay, so if you are trying to find things for paleo, or trying to find things for keto or vegan, any specific diet type, you can sort by that. And it's not some fly-by-night like website. It has a huge plethora of groceries. They even have an app where if you can go into the grocery store like Whole Foods, you can scan a barcode at Whole Foods to see if they have it on Thrive and you can try to beat the price. That's how competitive they are when it comes to pricing. Plus everything gets delivered to your doorstep. I'm telling you, it is a game changer for especially busy people. So that link saves you 25% off your entire grocery order, plus you get a free gift. So that link is down below. So the study that I wanna talk about today was published in Biomedical Research. Now full disclaimer, it is a rodent model study, okay? And I say this and I mean it, we cannot always rely on a rodent model study, but it is the natural progression, right? Okay, in vitro, then maybe flies, things like that, then we move into mice, then we move into humans. Still very promising stuff. This is what they found. They found that lemon water decreased the alcohol-induced increase of ALT, which is one of the liver enzymes you know of, AST, which is another one of the liver enzymes that you're aware of, also decreased the accumulation of hepatic triglycerides, Okay, those are stored fat in the liver, right? So it decreased that. And then of course, it decreased the lipid peroxidation. So it decreased the actual effect of reactive oxygen species on the fats in the liver itself or the cells in the liver. This is tremendous news. And even though it's in mice, for such a simple thing by just adding lemon water in, this is a huge change. Now we don't know to what degree this would have to be applied in humans, but let's look at the mechanism here. The researchers tend to believe that it has to do with what are called the phenolic compounds of lemon. Now, lemon has a lot of antioxidants, but they're kind of unique in terms of these phenolic compounds. They have what are called polyhydroxyl groups, which basically have the ability to scavenge free radicals at kind of a different rate. So it's different than just a normal antioxidant or like vitamin C or something like that. So apparently, it is suggested that these phenolic compounds have an ability to directly scavenge free radicals, which is fairly normal. It can directly go out and scavenge free radicals, but it also has the ability to inhibit the enzyme pathways that lead to the production of reactive oxygen species and the activity of reactive oxygen species. So what that means is that not only can lemon water just scavenge free radicals, but can also affect the pathway that creates them or makes them active. 
But then additionally, there's some evidence that lemon juice can influence our own superoxide dismutase levels. It could influence our own inherent antioxidants within our body. So basically, things like superoxide dismutase, things like glutathione, things that we create in our body to neutralize free radicals. So we have three potential pathways there. And again, these are still in rodents, but it's very, very fascinating stuff. And when you look at some of the other evidence that's out there, like there was a study that was published in the Journal of Biochemistry and Nutrition. This was pretty interesting too, because they found that adding just a small amount of the overall uh, polyphenols, the phenolic compounds from lemon, influenced glucose metabolism and it influenced fatty acid metabolism in mice, not having to do with alcohol. So it's also upregulating what's called PPAR. So we're upregulating basically the fatty acid utilization capability of our cells. PPAR is something that influences or in basically signifies that we are getting into a more fat adapted state. If our body is upregulating the mitochondria's ability to utilize fats, then we are potentially negating the negative effects of alcohol on beta oxidation. What that means is if alcohol makes it so that the mitochondria does not burn fat okay, and some of the phenolic compounds in lemon help the mitochondria burn some of the fat better, then maybe we put ourselves at a little bit more of a deadlock, right? Rather than being skewed one way negatively or one way positively, maybe it's just helping the situation out. So very positive evidence coming that way and a very cheap, inexpensive thing to start adding to your lifestyle. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.